So this is the last time we get to talk about lunar eclipses for a while. We've had our really good run of lunar eclipses the last two years, but that run is going to come to a close on November 8th. After that, there won't be another total lunar eclipse anywhere on the globe until March 2025. It's been good though. I mean, we've had two supermoon eclipses and the longest partial lunar eclipse of the whole century all in the last 17 months. And eventually things have to come back down to normal, right? Well, want to know what's special about this particular lunar eclipse? Does Tuesday, November 8th sound familiar to anyone here in the U.S.? It's election day. Throughout history, there are all kinds of stories about eclipses being omens, and lunar eclipses are usually bad omens. And here we get one on election day. Great. The pandemic is finally drawing to a close, we hope, and we get an election day eclipse. So who's this going to be a bad omen for? I don't know. Go listen to your favorite news channel. All I know is that we will all find out together, and we do need to try and actually find a way to get along once it's over. Ay. At least this lunar eclipse will be nice and long, though. Lunar totality is going to last an hour and 25 minutes, and that's really good. Anyone fortunate enough to see all of the partial phases will get to see the eclipse stretch out to a total of 3 hours and 40 minutes. That's really good. Sadly, all of you in Africa, almost all of Europe, and almost all of the Middle East are going to miss this one. The US, Asia, and Australia will get to see it, though. Those of you in the Eastern Hemisphere will get to see this lunar eclipse in the evening hours on Tuesday, November 8th. The further east you are, the higher the moon will be in the sky when the eclipse begins. Things are going to be tougher for us here in the Western Hemisphere, though. Because we're in the opposite hemisphere, the viewing details will be swapped for us. This will be a pre-dawn event, and the further west you are, the higher the moon will be when it enters the Earth's shadow. All of this means that the position of the moon in the sky is also going to be kind of interesting. In the eastern U.S. and Canada, the moon is going to set while it's still partially eclipsed. And while the western part of the continent is going to get to see all of the partial phases, that does have a cost. We're going to have to get up even earlier in the morning to watch lunar totality. The moon being lower in the sky does, however, make for a fun opportunity to pair the eclipse with a landscape in the foreground. So photographers, go have fun and share your results with us. Not a whole lot else to say about this particular eclipse. It's not a super moon, but the moon is a you know, healthy average size. And like I said when I started out, this will be the last total lunar eclipse for two and a half years. Thankfully, we do have a bunch of really exciting solar eclipses coming up in that stretch. So if you haven't already, please subscribe to this channel and hit the notifications button there so you'll get all the preview videos and hopefully even some live streams of some of those upcoming solar eclipses. Hope to see you again soon here on Zitality Town.